indirect cash flow statement. You know, most of us either pay more attention to the P&L, the income statement. Others gravitate towards a cash basis P&L versus an accrual basis P&L. Many accountants, and rightfully so, look at the balance sheet. I personally love the balance sheet. It tells you a little bit more about the company than, say, the average P&L. That said, as a finance-oriented professional, I pay most attention to the cash flow. Now, there are two basic cash flow statements. You have your direct cash flow model, and you tend to find the direct cash flow model being used by finance professionals because it literally sort of starts with the cash that I collected from revenue and reduce that by all the cash that I used for operations, financing, whatnot. Now, the indirect cash flow model, I actually appreciate it even more because it incorporates both the P&L, accrual base, and incorporates the changes in the balance sheet fiscal period over fiscal period, month over month, year over year. Now, what's the difference? Understanding those changes in your balance sheet versus what the P&L actually did in that time frame, it begins to allow professionals, business owners, understand certain efficiencies of cash. So a good example that kind of comes out of an indirect operating cash flow statement is if I made a million dollars in revenue and I booked, say, a quarter million dollars in accrual-based net operating profit, but yet my accounts receivable doubled, went from 250000 to a half a million dollars, that really begins to show you that the cash efficiency of that revenue is probably less than it was in the prior periods. Now, why do you care? Well, yes, in this environment, cost of capital is relatively low and quite accessible, especially with government stimulus. But there will be a day that being cash lazy is not going to be a reward in your business. So paying attention to certain efficiencies on the balance sheet come out in an indirect operating cash flow model. So there's five com basic components. You start with your net income, right? And that comes right out of your accrual-based P&L. Now, from there, you got to adjust for certain non-cash expenses. The most obvious, of course, is depreciation and amortization. It's usually like the second line on an indirect cash flow model statement. And then you're beginning to book the changes on the balance sheet as it relates to working capital, right? Accounts receivable. Did it go up? Did it go down? Your accounts payable. Things like deferred revenue. Deferred revenue tends to be actually in a cash event, but yet you don't recognize it on your P&L as a revenue event, right? So you got to adjust for that. That produces cash, although it is a liability, and yes, you got to produce against it, but it actually generated cash. If your accounts receivable goes up and your AP goes down and your deferred revenue kind of stays flat, well, the business actually consumed more cash and hopefully not to achieve the same results on the P&L, month over month, year over year. So those are kind of some of the things that come out of an indirect operating cash flow statement. And then lastly, it's your financing activity and activity in investing in your business. Remember, when you invest in your business and you don't take out any financing, that's cold hard cash to acquire a piece of machinery. But yet on your income statement, you're not going to see a big line item, an expense for that machinery. It ends up getting depreciated, right? That's what the accountants have come up with. Thinking about the sources and uses of cash, it all comes out of your indirect operating cash flow statement. And that's why that is one of my favorite statements. That was great. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave us some feedback. Also check out our website, growthlabfinancial.com. Again, subscribe so you can be notified for the next one.